Hello everyone and welcome once again to the BEE show. That's right, you heard correctly. This is now the BEE show. We've had a name change because obviously we're not the British Esports Association anymore. We're the British Esports Federation. Uh, we didn't really like the name uh, BEF show though. So we're now the British Esports Esports show. How original. <laughs> uh, yes, welcome, Brian. How are you doing today, of course? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you doing today, Saul? Yeah, doing pretty well. Pretty well. So it feels like this week's gone... Quite quickly, actually, we're he heading to well half term for most, not half term for us. We don't get half terms, do we? That's no. not quite how it works. But <laughs> exactly. he heading to half term, so exciting time for most people. Uh, yes. Today, we're joined uh, by Kieran Jones of the GCS Owls, who's going to talk to us a bit about what he has going on over at GCS. I'm sure we'll talk a lot about the camp's team, about his role uh, within GCS Owls, as well as some like B tech bits and pieces. So, Kieran, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Oh, uh, good, thank you. How are you both? Yeah, doing well, doing well. Good, good thank you. Good, good. So to start us off then, Kieran, do you want to just introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you do within the GCS Owls infrastructure? Yeah, so yeah, as I said, my name's Kieran. I'm a lecturer of esports and computing at Gower College Swansea. Uh, I'm the social media manager of the GCS Owls, overlooking the Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube channels. Uh, and also run the website for the hours as well. Awesome. So I'm going to start with a big one here. May probably the obvious question you were expecting to come, but like, how do you feel about the GCS hours going to Champs Finals in July? Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I think we were so close to the finals last year. We got to the semi-finals in Overwatch, uh, the team. Uh, absolutely fantastic to go one step again. One step further, um, still pinching myself to be honest. Uh, but it's all to do with the amount of hard work the students have been putting in, board reviews, the practices, the communicating they've been doing. And uh, yeah, it's paid off. Hopefully, they can go one step further again and hopefully win it. Yeah, hopefully so. I'm sure there's a lot of people rooting for you guys. Um, how would you say the season's been then overall <coughs> for the GCS Owls from like the very start up till now? Yeah, it's, it's been fantastic. Uh, we've entered uh, Overwatch, Rock League, Valorant, and yeah, every team have done really well. All teams have reached the top eight, uh, the quarterfinals, and yeah, it's it's been great because it's getting to practice more, and involved in the games, uh, communicating with each other, what time can we uh, practice this week? And yeah, it's, it's great. It's brought the whole not just the individual teams, but the whole organization, the Owls together. Um, so when they're, they're playing, they represent the college. And it does make them proud. It's great. Awesome. And so just out of curiosity, really, like, <clears throat> are you going to um, Nottingham with the team? Yes. No, how I think how that, far I think, is that journey going to be? Uh, no, it's, it's going to be great. Um, I think, I think my, my seat was booked first, I think. But, nice. um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. We, we, obviously, the, the, um, the first bit of planning we have to do, because obviously all our games have been online, it's been so easy. You know, we're playing Leeds, for example. Obviously, we don't have to travel to Leeds. We just play on, online, so it's great. So to actually to travel up to Nottingham, a bit of, uh, bit of work to try and sort buses out and the hotel. So it's, yeah, yeah it's a bit of um, working up there, but we... Yeah, we, we are definitely working hard to get that ready for our students to, to play. It will be a really, really exciting sort of atmosphere as well. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's something else <clears throat> when you actually go to an esports event and yeah. especially playing. Like, the, everyone's just going to feel so much different than, like, just speaking to people through Discord or through the game. Just, it's... It's all very strange, but I'm sure you guys are absolutely, absolutely going to love it. It's, it's going to be great. The, the, the Overwatch team in particular have to, have to send me out to the room sometimes because I'm jumping up and down so much <laughs> when, they're, when they're winning, so I have to calm down. Um, so it's going to be even worse come to the finals. I'm going to have to just watch from another, another building or something because um, I'm going to be bouncing up and down. That's good. That's what we like, though. We had the same case. Yeah. Uh, when it was Champs Finals last year, it was the Rocket League especially, uh, but you had teams like jumping up and down, shouting in the audience. Yeah, That's definitely yeah. what makes it so. We need more people really like you in the audience, so yeah. hopefully we get a good yeah. couple of people like that. Yeah, That's good. 
you can hype the crowd up for us. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so getting into specifics a little bit more about what you do with the owls. Um, so what's your favourite part about running the social media accounts for the esports team? Uh, I, I think, well, t- t- with the GCSL, it's like a project uh, for our students to aspire to. So obviously we teach the esports course, we teach social media on the esports course. And we just wanted to show our students a project that, okay, if you want to become an esports team or ourselves, okay, have a look at what we're doing. Um, but creating the videos, creating highlights, um, content creation, just sharing what we're doing day to day. But on a range of different channels, we started off on Twitter, then gradually grew on Instagram. Obviously, we had videos, we looked at YouTube. Uh, TikTok, obviously, and even YouTube Shorts. So it's it's a lot of work just to uh, keep that going. And sometimes the clips that the students are sending in, um, there's a whole list of clips I haven't managed to create yet because I'm having about 10 clips a day, which is crazy. But um, yeah. it's a good way to show off students um, highlights and get, get them involved more. Yeah. See, I'm always really nosy when it comes to like content creation as, as someone who does the content creation for the British esports stuff as well. So do you, do you guys have like a specific like plan around when it comes to content, like when, it, when you're deciding what content you do show and what content you don't show, what content <coughs> you create, what content you maybe take more time to, to plan? Do you guys have any content plans or anything like that that you can tell us a bit about? Yeah, so uh, that, that's important because you don't want to show too much of one thing. Obviously, with the owls, we got Overwatch, Rock League, Valorant, um, Minecraft, Super Smash Brothers now. And you don't want to be showing the same thing all the time. So you want to keep it varied, uh, but not just about highlights. It's all about what's happening on the esports course as well. So that's important. Um, I see other teams have things like TikTok Tuesdays, which is a great idea. You have a bit of a play on words. Um, so that's something that we look at and we try and recreate ourselves. So, um, but we try and keep it varied as much as possible. We try and involve the students as much as possible as well. Um, one idea we got for next year, part of the esports course, to give students different jobs, different aspects of social media. So, for one person who's making fantastic videos, um, passing on to me and put on to YouTube. And that, that's it. It's a case of no need to edit anymore. The video is absolutely fantastic. And then gets them to just be proud that they've made something that's been seen by hundreds, even possibly thousands, possibly in the future. Yeah, that's think... one thing we'll definitely look at doing. Yeah, that's one of the more exciting things I think about content creation, especially is making something, especially I'm sure for the student side, when it comes to like linking it into the B tech and things as well creating something that they're proud of and then being able to show it off to other people and other people give them praise and stuff like that. That's always not, it, it's a bit vain. I think when it comes to content creation, I think people think it's a bit vain. It's like, oh, and you, oh, everyone just, you just show off all the good bits and things. But yeah. It is, yeah. that's what it's about. Isn't it? And people, it's all about that celebration with other people about what you create and bringing people together. So on the topic then of the eSports B-Tech, um, what do you find the students most enjoy about the eSports BTEC course uh, in your kind of experience? Uh, I, think, I think it goes down because it's a BTEC, the practical side of it is probably the most uh, fun side of it. Obviously on the BTEC they do social media, they create their own social media accounts and promote themselves, um, which is obviously depending how good their work is, depending if they get less merit or distinction. Um, but we also, one thing we're looking at doing next year, running our in-house competition of who, who gets the most likes, the most impressions, win, uh, will win something. So it's, it's always good to have some bit of fun in that. Um, but organise an event, another good unit on the course, where we get our students to create events for other students on other courses. Um, so obviously we do esports and computing. Uh, so our esports students provide events for computing students to play games. So that's another good thing, and they do get behind that, and, and they do enjoy seeing that their hard work gets rewarded in some way. Yeah, and it's definitely really good that you you guys are able to sort of make that a transferable 
thing as well and like sort of bring more people ever so slowly into esports which is what yeah. we love um, it's really nice yeah we, we try and look at the esports course and the, the gcsls as as a project and whatever we can use anything from the BTEC esports course into the owls we, we, we try and put a hand to hand um in, in as many ways as possible yeah definitely um so really like how many students have you got on your course at the moment uh for the esports year one um this uh, last year we had um something like 22 previous year we had 14 it just shows how much is growing this year we've got uh, a reserve list so it's a bit of a wow we've got a good problem we've got about something like in the high 20s 28 29 obviously our classroom only takes about 24 so that's a good problem to have um so at this rate you might have to have a second classroom for them expand which is a, which is a great a great problem but, uh, yeah. we're, we're not we're not complaining so can you sort of describe the impact that esports has had on your students and yourself um me personally, um, it's really for my eyes to how big esports is because it's such a, a new thing for me. To be honest, uh, I've only picked it up years ago when the the esports course st started, and I looked all of myself into it. Um, and since that, looking at not just playing games because I'm not I'm not great, but it's watching watching other teams, watching the big teams compete, um, all the planning that goes behind the scenes. The coaching, the VOD reviews, uh, communication skills, um, and that, that's what I see with the students. Then the students generally encompass these skills, working together, problem solving. Why can't? Why did not that happen in that game last week? Have I have improved this week? And it's great to see the students improving themselves, not just in gaming, but so many other skills. Now, so you say. You're not very good at playing games. What games do you actually play? Then, out of curiosity. Uh, oh God. Um, oh, well, I'd say Overwatch is my main game. Um, I did play Rocket League for about ten seconds, and I thought, yeah, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't drive into this ball at all. So, I think I missed it the first time. Um, I think Over Overwatch definitely my go-to game. Um, I think I'm a lot of, a lot of people in the hours will probably disagree us, but I think I'm nearing plat. Very good. Yeah, I can see people disagreeing with me. At this point, probably, but yeah, you're slowly getting there. Like it yeah, takes time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I, I normally play tank, so um, I can't aim. So I'm, I'm blind that. So. Yep. Right. No, I have no brain. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm either mercy. Ah, very good. Very or good. um, diva, but I normally do OQ. Um, with either my brother or my best friend and they're normally like Ryan or Sigma so we do like massive combo ults and stuff but yeah. that's not going to be going on for much longer no <laughs> no no no. <laughs> no but it, yeah I think it's just nice meeting other people and stuff and mm. being able to speak to other people who aren't like aspiring pros in games who just play yeah. for fun yeah I, I think I think a good thing as well is because students know more than me, to be honest, at Overwatch. They've been playing it for a lot longer than I have. I'm learning from them. Um, there's some aspects that they're learning from me. I'm learning from them. So it's a win-win. You know, we're all learning from each other. Um, and there's aspects of the Beat Deck eSports course that they don't know a lot more than me. And I have to learn a lot faster than them, obviously. But there's some aspects of the course that I know more and feed on to them so it's it's esports is it's a great thing because no, no matter how old you are or have a background it just brings everyone together um, and just develop yourselves into a, a better better person to be honest yeah i think that's that's one of the things i really like about esports uh, with it i guess because it obviously comes from a gaming aspect a lot of people looking in when they see that it's the competitive side, automatically think, oh, I'm no good, so I can't participate. It don't, don't get me involved or whatever. But I know my, like my wife, for example, has that problem where she's like, oh, I can't play. I'm no good. I'll just ruin the game. Please don't ask me to play with you. <laughs> <But Yeah. laughs> the, 
the good thing about esports, and I guess even with like the esports B tech as well, is you don't have to be good at the game to to do well. You don't have to be good at the game to do anything really that you want to do. It's part part of it is having fun, but the other part of it then outside of just playing the game, there's the whole infrastructure which the esports B tech makes. I think very clear that there's not just playing the game that you can do involved with esports there's the content side there's the management side there's so many yeah. different places that you can yeah. get involved yeah. with yeah yeah it's, it's so accessible uh, if you want to do graphics for the team great you know it's fantastic if, if you're good at organizing events you know, it's right down your alley and it, it's so accessible if you want to reach out to schools colleges in the top teams they will try and help you develop yourself and approach a wider audience yeah so i guess touching on that a little bit then what advice would you give to other teachers who are looking to maybe run the esports b-tech or maybe a little bit interested they've seen a few things but not really sure what kind of the starting point would be i i think um communication is key i think you've got to you've got to look at what teams and colleges are running at the moment message them Get to know what what, what um, advice they would give, what uh, experiences they've had from it. Um, the only thing I would say is, from from my perspective, I've learned so much uh, because I come from a computing background. Um, I've learned so much in the last two years from esports, where um, using obviously content creation, graphics, and animation, I use that in esports to develop. Um, different graphics for different results so I can see a purpose for uses and things I make so, so social media for example and I can use that then part of the Jesus hours and shows that I can use as a post, put a post on Twitter and Instagram for post at the same time how many people will see that at different time zones during the during the day so obviously we've got fans in America and China got to pick the right time to post otherwise people won't see it so it's so much learning so much things to take up on um on this and for anyone who's thinking of doing these sports i would say yes just get involved um uh, immerse yourselves with it pick, pick a game or a couple of games that you enjoy playing as well just get involved in it and uh yeah just seek advice from a number of different organizations british sports especially yeah, it's it's really important for people to sort of come together as as such. Like you mentioned earlier, how accessible and sort of welcoming esports is. It's like one massive family, really. That if you were to yeah. go and ask someone a question, they'll be more than happy oh, to yeah, help. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really nice. Like people are able to sort of come together over the mutual thing and just help other people. And I, I, I think the the, the term. Um, when, when our students are playing games, GGs, you know, obviously it's competitive. That's that's five ten minutes, and then we're all friends again. You know, it's a bit of it's it's almost like friendly rivalry, I would say. One thing I've enjoyed definitely is obviously the rivalry we have. We've got GC Sowers. I don't want to miss anyone here, but obviously you've got Kieran Samurai, Commentary Cross, uh, Saint Vincent Sharks. You know, it's great having. Some, and it's exciting for the students because you know it brings in well, you see these top teams like e2 cloud nine okay it's, we've got our own rivalry and it's great to get them excited and it's a case of what can we do to try and better them this week or they or they've done a great tweet this week can we better them next week so it's it, it's really it's good competition not just in gaming as as a brand which, which is really really exciting really interesting yeah that's that's one of the things so uh, i used to work in a school before i used to work here and so when we did uh the student champs things one thing that i found very common is a lot of the students uh who would get involved were the students who wouldn't necessarily get involved in like your general like sports and your traditional sporting activities and so mm. getting them mm. involved in this was a real opportunity for them to then be able to expand that kind of their horizons and expand their friend group outside of the school and suddenly they're talking to these people outside the other schools like you say they've got their own little little rivalries going on and little things that they're doing uh it, i think that's one thing that I, I really really think esports does a lot better than a, a lot of other 
kind of avenues and, and extracurricular kind of activities is it, it brings together a lot of people in, in different ways that really you wouldn't be able to get from, from your kind of traditional sporting aspects. Yeah, and I say one of the quotes from a little while ago when I interviewed um, Martin from the Shark, St. Vincent Sharks um, is that his students don't really follow teams like football teams or sports teams but having the sharks gives them a team to support mm. and that's that's always sort of stuck with me in my head and yeah. just like i know that it's a widespread thing with champs that you have all these like friendly rivalries but everyone is such mm. like everyone is so happy to be able to have their own team and their own people to root for and it's it's going to be great, and I already I'm looking forward to seeing the um the rivalry on stage on finals. Then, <laughs> see how that goes. It, yeah, it's it, it's it's great, and obviously, um, obviously when we're on stage, okay, we play a game, and then as soon as we come off stage, we're friends, which is great. Um, so that, that's always good. Um, but I, I think the key thing, as you said there, obviously as, as part of a team. Our Overwatch team support the Rocket League. Our Rocket League team support the Valorant team. It's one big support network, which is great. So it's um, obviously you've got a Discord account. So when I put a, when I put a tweet there, for example, um, I put it on the Discord, everyone sees it, everyone engages with it, and everyone supports each other. Definitely. Yeah. So my final sort of big question <laughs> for you really is, I can sort of maybe guess the answer, but I want, I want to hear your reply. So what's something you're looking forward to the most for the Owls coming up in the next few months? <clears throat> um, really just to keep developing, just uh, keep growing. Uh, the students we have, just get possibly more games going. The um, only, th only game we haven't looked into at the moment is the Legends. Um, so it's a case of just making sure we're accessible every game possible um recently um um developed uh, an f1 um area with some of our students becoming uh, going into f1 which is great um uh, but the, the, probably the next one is going to league of legends um developing our social media more um getting more people aware of esports in our college i think um that's that's an important thing as well um obviously our trying to promote esports in the computing faculty, but sports is for everyone, not just for computing and media students and so on. It is for everyone. So you're doing science or maths or anything, great. When, uh, if you're good at something, creating content or making videos, join us. So I think every team uh, in the British esports uh, division is, is like that. Looking at people create content is, is great. Um, and behind that, there's, there's a student who's passionate about creating graphics. That's fantastic. Um, we need more of that in, in our students. We need more people partaking in different areas of social media, graphics, um, event management, and so on. Great to see. Well, that just about brings us to the end, Kieran. So thank you so much for, for joining us today. It's been a, a real pleasure to get some insight into an actual champs team and what goes on. Um, when we finish a podcast, we tend to have a little section called this or that. So we'll get two kind of opposing viewpoints and we'll get our contestants, I guess, which is us three today, to decide on which option they'd okay. rather choose. Uh, so okay. today is Overwatch themed because uh, you and Bryony are both very Overwatch centric. I'm not so much, but I, I, okay. I can follow along at least a little bit in <clears> to <throat> understand what's going on. So the this or that for this week uh, is Roll Q or open queue which one would you, would you prefer or which one do you have a, a kind of preference for if you need time to think i can go i'm ready to sort of uh, go well, for it personally me definitely roll queue because if you put me as dps um i can play as torbjorn only because i can put the turret down i mean the turret aims for me <laughs> so <Perfect>. <laughs> <laughs> that's only that's only reason to be honest otherwise that i pick why not on tank Yet. It's I've I've thought long and hard about this. And there's pros and cons for each, but I think I would have to go with open queue. 
because I have such a love for goats uh, yeah. <laughs> that I can't, it pained me to let that go. And I mean, original Overwatch was always like quick play classic. It was, it was open mm. queue. And yes, there are people that do pick five DPS and you're stuck filling as a healer. <laughs> um, but you find the right people, you get them, and then you just throw goats on the enemy team, absolutely dominate, and you're done. And for me, it's just being able to have that freedom of, oh, our tank's not really doing well enough, I'll just swap to tank, or same with the healer, they're not really doing well enough, right, let's swap, rather than me having to sort of painfully stick <laughs> To one role and watch our other role I can play not do as well. It it sort of gives that freedom, but I think for me it's mainly I like goats. Goats is fun. <laughs> I think I think you have to have a healer, haven't you? You've got to have a healer. Yeah. You know, you know, healer's got a healer, haven't they? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So for me, this I had a few schools of thought on this one. So coming from a, a League of Legends kind of centric mind view mind point, uh which is what I tend to play more often than not. My initial thought went to, well, in League of Legends, once upon a time, you used to just queue up and there was no kind of like role select like there was now. And so you queue in and it'd be, right, the first person to type mid in the chat, they'd be in mid lane, but then it turns out, oh, the person who gets pick priority, they want mid, so they'll take mid and suddenly the chat, it's a disaster in draft already because everyone's arguing over one role. Um... So my first thought was, well, actually, I think roll queue probably is better than coming from League of Legends because as soon as roll queue was implemented, it solved a lot of those problems. But my thoughts then went to, well, in League of Legends, yes, you can be queued as support and you'll get into the game and you're going to support. But it doesn't necessarily mean you will get to you only stuck with support champions or what the game decides are support champions. Whereas in Overwatch, obviously, you've got designated tanks, DPS, healers. Everyone fits into whatever bracket it is, and you have to then select from that bracket. If you're a healer, here's your choice, basically. Um, and so I do think, from that perspective, Overwatch maybe does lack a lot of the freedom that other games can give you, which open queue would give you the freedom then to be able to pick, well, yes, I can be a healer, but I can be playing healer in this way, or I can be a tank, but let me play a tank in this way, or I can, we've got two tanks, maybe let's have a three tanks or whatever, that might be good for whatever yeah. reason. Um, so while I understand the, I think the idea behind role queue, I think potentially there could be more freedom within it, which maybe is why I think personally I might lean more towards the open queue aspect of it. Um, That's um, yeah, I think with yeah, like you said, with with, with open queue, it's great if you just a certain heal, a hero and just want to have fun. Yeah, it's great to open queue, uh, but the only negative, as as Brian said, um, you might be stuck with healers or five DPSs and thinking, oh no, this isn't great. Yeah, that is a problem. <laughs> that is definitely that's, a problem. That's the only, pro only possible problem, yeah. So, so open queue is all right in plat. I'm plat open queue and plat tank in roll. So I sort of sit at this nice level where people sort of, if I were to say, oh, let's do this, they would do it. But I know in much lower ranks because my friends and my dad and my brother are in like silver and bronze. I've just out them all there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've played on their accounts before and it is genuinely painful when you go in and there's like five DPS insta locked within like two seconds yeah. of the screen being locked in. And I'm like, really? And then people aren't willing to swap. But I, I think, uh, oh, sorry. I, I think a good one as well is uh, one thing we've noticed with the, the owls is um, obviously we've got six players for the original Overwatch, isn't it? And obviously five of them are stacking up to go into have a quick play. Obviously that sixth player then thinks, all oh, right, okay, I'm with five other players. So our players have got an idea what to do, different strats and so on. But that other player has no idea what they're doing. So they're just walking off in a totally yeah. different direction. Uh, while our five are... Uh, a cope against six where this other person's 
in the corner. So, yeah, it, it is good. I think it's better if you play as some sort of team or um, it yeah. gives you an idea what you're doing, which is great. Definitely. Well, thank you very much, Kieran. It's been a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, thank yeah. you so much for everyone who's watching at home or listening at home. Uh, this is, of course, the BEE show, not the BEA show now, so make sure you remember that going forward. Um, I think that's pretty much it from me. Bryony, do you have any final words as well that you want to say before we sign off? Um, mainly because we've spoken a lot about Overwatch here. Just Overwatch League's getting exciting. You should probably watch. Plus, link your account and you get credits. And there's a cool Reaper skin at the moment, which is going to be getting some remixes in the next few weeks. So, yeah, just make sure you watch that and also watch the other... BEA, BEA? I, it's going to be stuck in my head now. So BEE show. <laughs> Episode for April, where I spoke with Saul about my thoughts on Overwatch 2. Um, that's sort of a nice tie in, but yeah, um, I hope you've all enjoyed. And thank you very much for speaking to us today, Kieran. Thank you. Yep, yeah, make sure you tune in to Champs Finals. That's happening at the end of June. So if you want some high quality action from schools all around the UK make sure you tune in because it's going to be absolutely fantastic we'll be all there in person live uh, but you can obviously watch from home via the Twitch channel uh, thanks again very much for watching and take care we'll see you next time bye <laughs>